Hey there folks. I'm going to go over on how to make uh, plastic lures, rubber worms, swim baits, um, basically anything that is possible to be made in, uh, in the uh, plastic sole component. I'm also going to go over on some safety. I got into this about two years ago. My son talked me into looking into it being that I do a lot of fishing and um, I spend a lot of times in and out of the uh, Bass Pro Shop and all other stores that carry fishing tackle. It's been a, kind of a good ride for me as far as what I got into. Uh, I basically now don't buy any plastic lures uh, unless I'm actually liking something on the shelf and what I do is I buy it and then just template it and make it, make it my own. But anyway, um, there were some things that I, I did look up on YouTube and they were very vague on the safetiness on this. Uh, they didn't go into too much depth. So I want to do that with you guys if you happen to get into this kind of hobby. Um, so stay tuned. Nice. So I'm going to go over the, the stuff that you need for safety. You need a vapor mask. That is a must. Even though you see people on YouTube doing this indoor and in enclosed area, not using nothing but a simple paper mask, that is not going to save your lungs from breathing in this, uh, the vapors from this component. You need gloves. And that is a must, guys. This component, you heat it up to 350 degrees plus, and um, if you're not wearing this stuff, and if you can see the glove, this stuff sticks on. It's like a napalm. <laughs> you get that stuff on your hands, it's going to give you a third or fourth de degree burn. And uh, you need safety glasses also for splat splatter back and all. You must wear that along with everything else that I've shown you. So before you start messing with this stuff, you definitely need to have all the above. Also, you want to have a well-ventilated room or uh, somewhere, somewhat of where the exhaust can be taken out. I uh, My shop here is in the garage. My son bought me um, a Home Depot fan, which I put on when I work. When I work with the component, does the job, shoots it right out to the driveway. Even though it's still, you know, that stuff still lingers around. Then you have your essentials. You have all your colorings. Uh, and obviously to start this kind of uh, hobby, is it, it, you have to start slowly because it is expensive in, in, in the beginning. But as you slowly add on your stuff, it pays off in the long run because um, if you consider and factor the amount of times that you go out and buy $4, $5, $6 bags and whatever the case may be on lures, uh, you're going to save yourself in the, in the long run on the investment of, of making your own lures. Um, I know that two years already into this, I don't go and buy no plastic whatsoever. Everything that I use on the water, I make. All right, so we have emerald green, purple, pumpkin seed color, chartreuse yellow, uh, orange, red, iridescent pearl. Um, these, you can buy them from uh, manufacturer MF. They, uh, they have a real wide range of, uh, of different colors and supplies. I don't solely buy from one company. I buy from many different companies depending on what their, their uh, specials and ranges and prices go. Um, with these, I noticed that they're really heavy on the, uh, on the coloring. So... I added BBs to the to the uh, pint because it sticks, and when you shake the stuff, it's, it doesn't mix up well. So when you add the BBs, it mixes it, it mixes it up really well. Don't have to be BBs. Anything that's metal that you can put in there would be great. Uh, eyes, the eyes I use to add to the lures, glitters. Now I got several different colors of glitters. These are special glitters. They're actually made for this component. Uh, you do not go out and buy glitter at a, a Walmart thinking that, hey, you know, this will work because 
uh, trust me, this shit will catch on fire, man. Uh, if you're using glitter that is not made for the specific temperature range and made for this this uh, component. Uh, more colors. They're um, all different sizes. Basically makes up for what these are. If I don't want to be dealing with bigger size of the uh, of the of the uh, pint size. Salt. Now this salt isn't uh, your regular salt that you use for cooking. It is a very extra fine salt which you add into your rubber um, which is nice because it adds the flavor to the worms just like uh, some of these companies Zoom, Berkeley's they add salts to their uh, rubber uh, lures it, it, it gives the attraction for any fish that goes after it um, <clears throat> I heat my components on a um, coil heating element or I do a microwave which is here slightly stuck. I have to tell you that once you use a microwave you cannot use it to heat up food anymore um, and that goes back to what I was saying that the components in the polymers in this uh, stuff that you're making is it's really not really safe to uh, consume or breathe so m keep in mind that if you get a microwave I will go to Goodwill or somewhere uh, or buy a real cheapo that you don't have to worry about it um, this is the uh, the way of heating the stuff doing it on a microwave or on a heating coil do not do this stuff on your stove at home inside or anything like that I'm not sure if people are doing it but I'm just giving you kind of a word of advice with that now um, what are my results with making these lures well here I got a several black and white pictures these are bass that I've caught with my product same as my buddy uh, we fish out in the Everglades um, pretty much um, I can honestly see it tell you that it feels good all oh, this stuff is all stuck um, you know it works well uh, just like anything they're lures so you may have some good days and bad days with it but regardless what it does the same thing as the ones you buy in the store Mayhaten uh, oil shrimp krill oil garlic plus UV enhancer all that stuff you can add into your product now here's the catch guys when you make your worms and this all this stuff that you're seeing here is made by me is that you can make your worm either soft or you can make them hard now store uh, lures there the companies add softener to it but a bit too much and they intentionally do that so that you can you go through your bag of worms much quicker than if you were making them yourself and you're gonna say how is that well there's actually a hardener here's a hardener that you um, basically add to your worms and you don't add a lot to it you basically judge it by doing one batch and see how they stretch and how they hold and that's how how much you would add you had heat stabilizer because obviously when you heat this component constantly it will burn um, at some point it, it, it loses his uh, uh, his integrity of, of holding the heat so you have to add stabilizer at some point and you'll figure that out once you start making more of these uh, along the road got more glitters uh, up here I have Pyrex glass and that is really the key of this whole thing you use uh, Pyrex glass two ounce cups small cups these things hold the heat pretty well you can buy them at Walmart but once you've used them to do this component you can now use it for food once again I have an aluminum that's for the for the oil of uh, the uh, coil heating element you cannot put Pyrex on uh, on on the coil it will explode so you make sure that it, only Pyrex is going to go into microwave nothing more nothing more I got some uh, blending uh, wire whatever you want to call it I use that so when I make my um, plaster Paris mold and uh, I'm going to show you I have a Gary Yakuyomo uh, Cinco that I made as a hand poured and these come out beautifully you know 
there's a um, a take on YouTube by guys who make them. That's how I got to kind of got into that. You can do hand port or you can do uh, injection. Here's here's an injection mold. You know, and they work well. You get some nice worms off of it. The majority of my um, my molds are the high end aluminums. I buy I buy from Bass Tackle uh, uh, Warehouse, which is pretty good. They they their molds hold up. I have a box of molds here, crawl daddies, and so on. And just to show you an example, now I have not made any worms in over. I have not made anything in over two years. And I'll tell you, I got more than enough of this shit laying around. Um, so I got some paddle worms, some brown worms, some glitter worms, the two different colors. Bye, honey. Sorry, folks, I had to get back to my, uh, my thing here. My wife was just leaving, so. But anyway, um. I got some some of these worms are they're glow in the dark. I got some glow in the dark uh, powder, which you know, believe it or not, it truly does work. If I just shut the light off in here, this these will glow. Um, crawl daddies. Um, I have several types of these. I need to put this down a minute. It's a crawl dad. And you can put these on a jig. They work well. This is a, a hand poured glow in the dark finesse worm. Um, gosh, uh, there's so much that I have made here I can't even possibly go over. I got a couple of these funky looking worms. I don't know if you can really see these in the bag. You know, some chartouse worms, some curly tails. I do use sometimes the power bait uh, bags just so I can put, I, I just don't know where where, where more to put these uh, <laughs> self-made rubber lures. But um, I am going to do a, a shoot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a batch and I'm going to show you how I make these. And then um, I'll, I'm, you know, I'll inject it and give you guys a general idea. So if you, you know, if you tune into the video, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Okay, guys, this is my plastisol, and I'm going to pour in the Pyrex. And basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, if you can see that, seven fat worm, seven inch flat worm. And um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of this stuff here. I'll bring this camera around so you can see. This is what the component looks like. Now obviously it doesn't come in this container. It comes in a different container. I actually have a big jug of this stuff in, a, in one of the closets in my house. I don't keep it out here, dude, because I live here in Florida and the heat tends to just mess up everything. One thing I forgot to mention, um, anytime you fish with any of these lures that you're making, um, I don't throw them out because you can bring them back and you can remelt them. I got a whole bag of used up worms and stuff, so what I do is I just remelt them and make more lures. So you're constantly recycling this stuff. The only time I throw it out is when it really gets to a point that you can't do anything with them anymore. So with this stuff that I just put in there, I'm going to add a little bit of the salt. And I think I'm going to go with, um, with a purple color. Now I got two kinds. I have a blue, actually. Uh, sorry, my bad. Purple. So I'm going to add a little smidge of the purple to it, some glitter. Don't know which color glitter because I'm just doing this kind of on a whim. Um, but I have uh, hologram glitter, hologram bigger glitter, some blacks, and I got some more glitter in this thing here. 
So I don't know. I'm going to have to pick and see which one I want. Or I can add a red glitter to it or, or white glitter. Maybe a white glitter would look nice. Let's try the uh, white glitter with the purple. Should uh, kind of really outstand it, the color. But anyway, I am going to take this component, add the ingredients to it, a couple of drops of this. Uh, I'm going to put some garlic sauce in it and a little bit of salt. We'll put this down here in a second. Let's see. You're going to see me add some stuff in it here, guys. And, uh, forgive me for not having it all set. So anyway. So I'm going to start with first the color. Don't need a whole lot of it. Just a smidge of it. Bam. I should take care of that. Just got to mix it up. Let me clean this color here. I use a metal stick. Kind of spin this puppy around. Get it nice and mixed. I'm not going to add the glitter to it yet. What I am going to do right now is I am going to put it in the microwave and cook it. I'll get back to you in a minute guys. Okay guys, so I'm going to put this in the microwave. Okay, added a minute and a half, so I'm going to quick start. And while that's cooking, I'm going to show you what I have here. So I got a one eighth of a tablespoon of the salt that I'm going to add. And then the glitter. So once this stuff gets cooked, I'll bring it. Now obviously it's going to take more than a minute and a half, but I go by, you know, by a minute and a half increments until the product uh, heats up. And you'll know when it's ready because it, it turns from a white to a clear liquid, like almost like a syrup. Okay guys, my mouth is going to sound, my voice is going to sound a little muffled because I'm already dealing with this, but as you notice, it's done to congeal. I'm going to stir this up a little bit at this point. It's still not quite ready yet. Um, let me put this down a minute. Rubber gloves. I can peel this off without not getting burned. Um, but it does get hot. So at some point I won't even do this because I will feel it. Um, anyway, uh, let me run it back in the microwave and try to melt it some more. So you see the smoke coming off of this is really hot right now. So I am going to add a little bit of the salt. Don't need that anymore. Got to put this away. Got to do the glitter. Make it nice, nice. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's beautiful. I'm going to mix it up some more. Probably add more glitter to it. I don't think it's enough. The color is super dark. I can make the color lighter. But I want to keep this color. Uh, it seems like the bass have been hitting darker colors where I've been fishing. A little more of that. Microwave for a few seconds just to get it ready. Okay, guys, 
we're ready to inject. So I'm going to take the injector, I'm going to let it sit so I can get some heat to it. Just before I draw it up, I'm going to draw up. To my die, inject slowly. Now you have resistance once the once the uh, plastic is has uh, reached this point. I add a little more to the top of it. It does get messy. Let's put the rest of this in. Oops. I just dropped my whole piece in there, but that's okay. No harm done. Now you see what I'm talking about wearing gloves. I mean, if I didn't have gloves, this shit will burn the hell out of me. But it's clean. And I found that when you wear rubber latex over the material, it works the best. This stuff I'm gonna let sit. I can re-inject again once this cools off. Now I did put water in there. The whole idea of water is that once I take the product out of the mold, I wanna immediately cool it. Now put it in there. Never mix water with this stuff. It's not bueno. It'll mess you up. <laughs> Anyway, give me a second and I'll get back to the shoot. Okay, I know I'm doing this a little bit quick, but I just wanted to show you. So I'm gonna separate the plate. And here are my worms. I'm gonna cut them and I'm gonna put them to cool off. Let me place this down here a second. Stay put. And it's nice. The glitters didn't show up because it's awfully dark. Ain't that nice? Look at that. Here's another one. You could see the glitter, if, you know, mixed up. Um, what I can do is I, I can lighten the product. I can make this a little lighter, which I can, and I'll show you how I do that. And re-inject again. This part goes back to recycle, so I cut it. And you can see that. That's all gonna be recycled. So it's best cutting it because it, 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 it's better handling it for melting purpose. There we go. This is what I'm left with. I am going to add a little more of the plastisol, and I'll make this purple a lot lighter. Okay, this is my second injection. I'll be smoking. Once again, let the, uh, the injector heat up a little bit before you draw. There you go. Should be a nice shoot. Slowly. Bam. Reach to the point. Just give a little more of a squirt. Pour everything back out. This is super hot now. Super hot. Oh 
Let's have my gun ready to re-inject again. I got more templates. I'm just doing this for the shoot. Usually I do. I do uh, several of these and instead of doing one plate at the time, but because I'm doing just a shoot, um, <clears throat> what do you call it? Um, I'm only doing one. <clears throat> So I can probably get a couple of injections out of that. Probably still warm. And this stuff solidifies pretty quick. I should really wait, but... It's still soft. These look really nice. They're a little lighter. I didn't realize how much dye I put in there. And it don't matter how much of the plastic I put in. I can't lighten it up. But they are really nice. They look good. I didn't have this color in my collection. So for the video I'm just doing it. So anyway, folks, that's basically what it is. Let me get this, these gloves off, and I'll pull one of the worms outside so you can see it under the sun. This is the last one I actually made. If you guys can see that. But beautiful glitter on it and like I said it's as simple as that if you have any question please uh, leave a message please do subscribe to my channel I'll have some more coming videos on uh, on lure making and so on thank you for watching